morning, everyone. 9 a.m. I was afraid nobody would come except for maybe a couple of people, including myself and David. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's also a pleasure after all that time to be given a speech in real reality. The graphics is amazing. <laughs> I remember watching that TED talk by a guy who spent an entire week wearing a virtual reality display. So his first thought when he finally took it off, what an amazing graphics. <laughs> Today we'll be talking about the graphics quality in VR, AR, and how we can make it better. Let me start with a little teaser. This picture was taken inside of HP Reverb G2, one of the latest and greatest VR displays nowadays, running Microsoft Fly Simulator. Oh, sorry. This one. And this picture was taken with the same device, improved in a certain way. Uh, let's take a closer look. The HP Reverb G2 S is improved. S is improved. Quite a difference in quality, in texture ability. So why wouldn't that latest and greatest VR display show us a good picture quality out of the box? And what exactly did we have to improve to make it better? Was it the display panel or the optics? The answer is neither. If you think of a VR display as or a combination of a display panel and a lens, and for example, you would show a simple grid like this on the display panel, you would be expecting to see it as it's displayed, but in fact, the picture projected through the lens will be affected with the chromatic aberrations, geometry distortions, vignetting, etc. The picture you would see in that simple device will be quite different from what was displayed. So in mixed reality displays, there is another must-have component, image pre-processing, aimed at compensating those aberrations and distortions of the optical system. For example, it does channel pre-scaling to compensate for their chromatic aberrations that's going to happen in the lens. It does geometry pre-warp that is inverse to the geometry warp of the lens, etc. The idea is that this, so to speak, pre-spoiling of an image is canceled against the spoiling of the image by the lens. And as the result, those two, uh, as the result, the, the eye sees um, almost correct picture. The word almost is quite important here, because in the first place, not everything can be corrected. And with the more and more demanding specifications, requirements, higher resolution, wider field of view, larger eye box, and the optical design constraints still being in place, so we cannot make the optical system bigger, we cannot make it heavier, etc. We don't want it to be more expensive in the end of the day. Actually, those constraints are growing because we want lighter devices. We want smaller, slimmer devices. That gap, that unbridged optical performance gap, the difference between what is displayed and what you see is growing and becomes apparent. There are new challenges to address. For example, the lens blur, that small lightweight optical system just cannot be as clear as it's needed to transfer that increased display resolution to the human eye. The resolution, those fine details, get lost when transferring through the lens. Another challenge, the movement of eye pupil. The eye pupil is an optical element. So when it's off the optical axis, the design, the optical design made an assumption that the eye is at the center simply doesn't work anymore. So the color fringing and blur outburst at wide angles, the picture gets completely ruined in uh, that fringe and blur. So uh, 
the high pixel density, high resolution alone doesn't work. It became apparent when the VR display's resolution reached a certain point. A great example is HTC Vive Pro, which had substantially higher resolution than the original Vive. But it appeared that the users couldn't see much of a difference. The reviews said much of that extra resolution is useless. I mean, that, that was on time, but <laughs> it's not my slide. <laughs> it says no signal. Okay. So, what do we do when we hit a wall? We try to push it. Vario came up with so-called human eye resolution display, suggesting that the number of pixels and the pixel density are enough to match the resolution capabilities of a human eye. Uh, what, what's going on? It's like clicking itself. Back. Okay, so we use this fine drawing to test various display. This is how the display picture looks like. And here is how it looks like to the human eye in that display. Quite different. Look at that blur, look at that fringing. The human eye resolution was projected, but never got to the human eye. So, uh, it appears that simply increasing the pixel density doesn't work. Uh, the optical design is physically constrained. What about the third component, image preprocessing? Can we improve that? In the end of the day, it's software. I have to mention that currently used image preprocessing methods in mixed reality displays are super simple, like fixed channel scaling, which addresses just a subset of chromatic aberrations, so-called lateral chromatic aberrations. And it works only when the eye pupil is at the optical axis and the user looks exactly at the center. Geometry pre-warp, also fixed. At wide angles, the geometry starts wobbling, etc. To address the new challenges, we have to move from school math to some kind of rocket science. We have to be able to computationally pre-compensate for the lens blur. Most experts, well, all experts in the field would tell you it's impossible. We have to be able to correct you know, the entire scope of chromatic aberrations, like longitudinal chromatic aberrations, for example, not only lateral. We have to pre-correct higher order aberrations, coma, astigmatism, etc. And all that has to work at all gaze directions, at all positions of the eye pupil. We at Almalens created such a technology. We developed a method of characterization of a given optical system in a way that we create a transformation that is inverse to that entire scope of aberrations. This inverse transformation is pre-calculated for the entire field of gaze directions and eye pupil positions and is available on demand at runtime. Okay. <laughs> so, we get the information of eye pupil position from the eye tracker. We know exactly how the projected picture will be spoiled on its way through the optical system, through the eye pupil to the retina. And it, again, we know that in the form of a transformation that is inverse to that. So, we apply it before the picture is projected, and this pre-aberration is canceled against the lens aberration. The user sees high resolution, clean picture. We call it the digital lens for it to be practically doing a job of a corrective lens system while still being pure digital, pure software. Uh, let's take a look at a few examples. So now the camera is looking inside uh, the Vive Pro Eye. The circle will show the gaze area, and when it's red, it's the device as is. When it's green, the digital lens is applied. Look at the texture, details, 
edges. A noticeable difference. Let's remember Vario, how that picture, that fine drawing looked like. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> David, you, we need to put that music back. <laughs> I like the demo between Blurred and not Blurred, though. Uh, the there will be more. Focused. There will be more. <laughs> David, we need that music. <laughs> okay, so here is the device as is with the digital lens. As is with the digital lens. Look at those numbers, the other details. Can you see the difference? I'm sure you can. A closer look. As is with the digital lens. As is with the digital lens. Wow, that human eye resolution finally got to the human eye. And, and the music. Okay, HP Reverb G2. A closer look. The device S is with the digital lens applied. S is with the digital lens. Imagine you are on a pilot train and what do you prefer? This or this? If you are going to buy HP device, don't let them fool you. Another scene, you cannot read it. Now you can. You cannot read it. Now you can. I just cannot stop switching those slides. Wow. Another high resolution device, Pico 3 Neo, as is with the digital lens. Not just sharper picture. It's more details, it's higher effective resolution. The chart here, the left chart here, shows uh, the MTF20 measured from the center towards the edge of the field of view. I will try to be not very scientific. So for the reference, if the displayed resolution would be clearly transferred, we would be measuring 0 0.5, and we are measuring 0 0.3 in the ideal case that the eye is at the sweet spot looking at the center. It's much lower resolution already. When the eye, is, the eye pupil is off the optical axis, just three millimeters off, another two-fold decrease in resolution. With the digital lens, we are measuring resolution increase across the entire field of view at all gaze directions up to 2.7x effective resolution increase. And what is impressive, even in the very ideal case, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, the device is ideally positioned and the user looking straight at the center, so the quality is as good as it gets, almost two-fold increase in effective resolution. More details, clean picture, without any physical modification of the device. Zero size added, zero weight added, an algorithm. An algorithm that is lightning speed fast. We are measuring about quarter of a millisecond latency on, of, on modern equipment. Uh, it can be implemented virtually for any compute core, GPU, vision processors like uh, Qualcomm Hexagon, which Qualcomm delivers in their XR chipsets. It can be embedded into renderer or implemented in silicon, it be a part of a display chip. And the good news is before this technology gets adopted by uh, the device makers and gets implemented in their next generation products, we are making it available in the form of an OpenXR plugin so the users can experience better picture quality, quality already with the existing devices, with the existing compatible devices. Thank you all again for coming. Don't miss your chance. Check out our live demos at booth 614. I'm not doing anything, it just switches by itself. <laughs> Thank you again for coming. Questions are welcome.
We are going to have some Q&A uh, as we have a little bit of time left here. For anybody that would like to ask Eugene any questions, please feel free to step up to the microphone. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the talk. I wanted to ask you when you were modeling it, did you consider a uh, particular eye model? How does it work in presence of uh, different aberrations from different people's eye? So we are not addressing the aberrations of uh, the, um, the human eye. We, we consider the eyes to be kind of ideal. So we, we cannot, unfortunately, we cannot fix the problems of particular uh, person's vision with that. So we, we are aiming at like delivering the best to kind of 100% proper uh, vision. Okay. Then if, if, if there are problems with, uh, with the vision, uh, well, it's, it's improved, it's, it's improved <clears throat> as far. Oh, what I meant to say is that if you do the correction this way, then this means that uh, humans, very few humans will be able to see it, who has eye very close to the ideal case. So in that case, uh, for majority of the people, you, they may not see the full benefit of this scheme. Well, the fact is the majority of people actually see the difference. Yeah, very <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I wasn't clear what your technology is. Uh, so I, for example, work with AR glasses in which use a bird bath design. Uh, they re reflect off a mirror, uh, so the light is not passing through polycarbonate lenses. Would your technology be able to help the glasses I work with, or is it specifically about uh, the chromatic aberration of, AR, of VR lenses? So it's not specific to chromatic aberrations. It's, it uh, works with the entire scope of aberrations, including higher order aberrations, smear, etc. cetera. Uh, if I got you right, so if in a system, in a pure reflective system, so without, without optics, I have no immediate answer to you. So we have to, we have to talk to someone in our company who knows more than that, and he's, he's sitting right there, so you have a chance. <laughs> we have time uh, if anybody has any remaining questions. Um, otherwise, I just want to thank Eugene and thank you for coming. <laughs>